is himself the senior student of later and even more international famous Professor Zhang Manqing. Dr. Wu Kaufman has traveled the world for competitions and with many top honors. And that's very impressive. And uh, he's currently working on a book on chiropractic history and uh, research. His big title is Tai Ji Ba Jin. You see, actually, he has a Chinese on his slides. An exploration of concept in Yang style Tai Chi Chuan. Please help me welcome Dr. Wolf Kaufman. So uh, I've been trying to learn Chinese for a long time, so that's not my Chinese. That's uh, my older brother, Julian. Thank you for uh, translating my slides. So um, I, uh, I brought the, pretty much the same uh, lecture from uh, last year because last year we got way behind time, and so I did like a 10-minute thing. And it's such a good topic that um, that I wanted to uh, I wanted to make sure that we we covered it. So by a show of hands, um, uh, how many people practice uh, Tai Chi practitioners in here? How many of you practice Tai Chi? Show of hands. How many people practice Tai Chi in your Tai Chi? Tai Chi. Push hands. Tai Chi. Higher. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so how many of you practice Tai Chi but don't practice push hands? Okay, not that many, some. So um, I would urge you to overcome your shyness, right? And uh, practice uh, Tui Shou. Professor Zhang considered it an essential part of, of Tai Chi learning. And I think the reason is because, you know, there's meditation uh, all over the Eastern uh, world. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the martial arts lore, uh, the qi, cultivating qi, is only in China. And uh, so none of these martial arts, none of these meditative disciplines have a lore of martial arts. Because the body doesn't develop in the same way. They have prana and they talk about internal energy, et cetera, et cetera. But it doesn't, it doesn't uh, develop in the same way. This is unique to Tai Chi and to the, uh, the Nei Jia. And I think probably the big difference is because, you know, the seated disciplines, uh, all the meditative disciplines, you're sitting down. And one of the first things we learn in the Nei Jia is that you're going to do your standings, you're, you're going to do your, your meditation standing up. So there's a big, obviously a big difference. Uh, each one only, only doesn't really have postures, it just has standing meditation. And yet these guys are, are very, very good at uh, push hands. Their internal cultivation is very obvious. So I think that um, just taking your meditation and standing gives you something very, very different. And then, of course, in Tai Chi, we start moving. So it's moving meditation, as uh, Mr. Bob Smith, I think, coined the term. It might have been Professor John. But then that takes meditation to even a, a, a much more difficult uh, level. And then another thing is uh, ding shi, you know, standing postures, you know, taking your tai chi postures and holding them in order to cultivate your internal. That's very difficult too. And of course, you want to uh, chur uh, uh, eat some bitter. The more bitter you eat, the better it is. So. You know, you're holding your posture, and you're trying to remain, keep a, a mane that is uh, relaxed and uh, contained. And then the next level is somebody's attacking you, somebody's pushing you, and you're trying to remain uh, inside your Tai Chi envelope mentally and physically. And so each one of these stages is like an accelerant for your Tai Chi uh, development. 
And of course, one of the manifestations, or one of the, the key parts of push hands is fa jin, uh, projecting strength. And that's a lot of fun. And uh, it's sort of like a, a study that uh, needs to be looked at all of its own. So, um, overview. Um, fa jin is widely regarded as the culmination of tui shou push hands, generally viewed as the way to make opponents fly across the room, which is very exciting. Certainly can be effective against a single attacker, okay? Because it takes a lot of uh, it takes a lot of focus. You know, you can't. You know, I think you'd have to be a, at a very high level. Uh, you know, where you you could you could do uh, multiple attacks or attackers. Excellent tw uh, tr uh, tui shou training exercise, and uh, probably should not be used as a defense strategy due to the complexity of the technique, except by expert practitioners. So, you know, there's been a lot of talk about how Tai Chi compares with uh, MMA people. And I think that if you're a Tai Chi practitioner, you'd have to be insane to just get, go against a, a very well-trained MMA person. Just like a person off the street would be insane to think that they could beat you in Tui Shou. Um, MMA is a distillation of the most efficient fighting techniques, the most efficient pieces of fighting techniques from all over the world, and people say five of them, five different schools of thought. And uh, they focus on these very efficient uh, training uh, techniques. And if you go in cold turkey, you, know, you really ought to have your head examined. Many of the top MMA people I have, uh, I have assurances from my students uh, who also do MMA. They tell me that the top people in MMA are very interested in Tai Chi and doing Tai Chi, and that it helps their MMA. Because as Professor Jung used to say, you know, tennis won't help your Tai Chi, but Tai Chi will help your tennis. Tiddlywinks won't help your Tai Chi, but Tai Chi will help your tiddlywinks. Soccer won't help your Tai Chi, but Tai Chi will help your soccer. So MMA is not really going to help your, your Tai Chi, but um, Mr. Smith, uh, my first uh, Tai Chi teacher and one of uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Jung's uh, most illustrious students, he had a very good friend, um, and, uh, oh shoot, now his name uh, uh, slips me, but uh, he, was a, he was a huge guy from the Netherlands, and he was a bouncer and a street fighter, and uh, you know, studied boxing, John Blooming, yes, not the judo guy, but the fighter guy. Yeah, yeah, John Blooming. And John Blooming was giving an interview to a martial arts uh, channel, and he said, in a fight, the guy who gets hit in the face first is going to lose. So in Tai Chi, you know, we're, we're prepared for you know, all of these things that we encounter in push hands, and, and an M MMA person is going to look to hit you in the face first. And in you know, Tai Chi internal cultivation, I'm very comfortable with getting hit and kicked anywhere in the body, anywhere in the legs, because of you know, Tai Chi cultivation. I'm not comfortable with getting hit in the face. I'm sure I could endure it better than a lot of people who are untrained in Tai Chi. But being a, a chiropractor and a researcher in brain and, and neurology, uh, the shock of being hit is going to stun you, and there's the opening, and Lord knows what happens. So um, I think that uh, Tai Chi is getting a bad rap uh, because of this, because the training of Tai Chi and push hands makes you very, very solid, and makes you, gives you a very, very powerful base. And all martial arts stem from that. It all comes, it all, everything that you want to do stems from that. Okay, four essential pieces of, uh, of the uh, Fa Jin. Next slide, please. So, um, the right opportunity. Uh, Professor Jung talked about the wave of resistance. So, this is when a person, uh, their survival reflexes kick in, and they're not going to yield any ground. They're going to try and hold on to their territory and not be thrown to the ground. That's actually your opportunity, because they're using Li, and uh, it creates a, a little bit of a, uh, a wiggle, uh, an instability. Um, Professor Jiang said, you generate power through the, the feet and the legs. Of course, we know this in Tai Chi, you know, the legs and the feet and the torso, and connecting the body. 
Uh, that only, of course, that makes sense just from uh, everyday physics. But of course, as we advance in Tai Chi and the body really starts becoming one piece, either through the smooth muscle, if you don't believe in the Chi, or the Chi and the smooth muscle, if you believe in the Chi. So the body becomes one piece and really is integrated you know, as a whole and becomes extremely powerful. Uh, three, aim up through the center like an arrow. Professor said, you know, you've got to find the center of the person and shoot up slightly through them to make them go, go upward. And there's a, a, a law in physics, um, if we have physicists here, if you control the center of the object, then you control the object. So that should always be what you're looking for in push hands, is you're trying to find their center. And uh, of course, in a beginner, it's a very, very big thing. And the better we get in Tai Chi, the smaller it gets. But also, you develop the smooth muscle, you develop the Chi, so that you just anchor to the ground much more uh, solidly. Uh, and the last one, Professor Sa, you know, you must have internal power. You don't have to have internal power, but really that is our big advantage. Um, otherwise, it's, um, if you're a big guy, and you're pushing a little person, you just have a mass advantage. If you're an adult and you're pushing with a child, you have a mass advantage. In fact, for a beginner, if you have children or grandchildren, and you can play a little game with them, where you can try and find their center and make them resist, and just try and make them, you know, Professor Sun, Professor Jung said, you know, try and make both of their feet go up. If you only make one foot go up, uh, you haven't done it right. So, you know, you're trying to make both of their feet pop up, and you can really, you know, get a good sense of what's going on. So, wave of resistance, you know, you can, you, they, they come here and they totter a little bit, and then you're underneath them, and going through the center, and slightly up. Uh, and um, you have to have a momentum, or a positional, or strength advantage, or the internal power advantage over them in order to have the, uh, the best effect. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, Fajin uh, 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 Ben Lo, uh, who uh, uh, recently passed away, said, uh, Fajin is just like catching a ball and then throwing it. Um, the person is the ball, and you're catching them and throwing them. Or, you're going after them, coming into them, finding them, catching that ball, and throwing it. Wave of resistance is the opponent's manifesting a defense of resistance in order to carry out a move against you, implementing muscular power toward an end. And Professor John said, feeling that wave of resistance takes a long time. And what this is connected to, it may seem sort of miraculous and fanciful, but actually there's a, a great deal of uh, medical research now on subtle energy. So these are very, very low amplitudes of uh, bioelectricity, uh, bioenergy in the brain and the body. And that's sort of like the levers. So to make my arm move like this, it, takes, uh, it starts with very, very subtle things inside. And it all begins in the brain. So the brain marshals energy to make a move. And then more, uh, a larger bit of energy has to be gathered in order to move into the muscles. And then yet another larger wave of energy has to go into the muscles to make the arm move. So it all starts with very subtle energies uh, in the brain. And researchers have found that the human brain is extraordinarily sensitive to these subtle energies, uh, especially with training. And so this is an aspect of uh, Tai Chi push hands, that as we're pushing with the opponent, and we do, we, we, you know, those of us who have practiced it, we know we are getting a sense of what they want to do, what they're going to do. And this is all these subtle energies of the body marshalling resources before they actually make a move. Another part of it is the fact that in Tai Chi we just become so doggone thick and heavy and powerful that it really doesn't matter what they do. 
we beat them before they get there to us. So that really has two aspects to it. One is subtle energy, very, very sensitive. You know what they're going to do before they do it because you can feel that energy coming. The other aspect of it is your root, your, your Taiji density is thick enough that if they do it, it really doesn't matter. The body is so powerful, the body is a hand. So instead of pushing them with your hands, you're just pushing them with your body that's very, very powerful here. So you haven't moved, and yet you beat them because when they come there, they find, oh my gosh, he's very thick, he's very powerful. And uh, he's, he's taking advantage of uh, what I did against him. Um, internal power refers to the peculiar power cultivated by long Tai Chi practice, i.e. the Qi, or perhaps the accumulation of smooth muscle as verified by numerous medical authorities studying the health benefits of Tai Chi. So a lot of people, I don't know if they don't believe in Tai Chi, uh, in Qi, that's fine. Um, I think you come to a point where there's just no other way to describe it. Qi is an engine for cultivating Qi, and that's all there is to it. Um, but if you don't buy that, uh, all uh, medical authorities who, who have looked at Tai Chi in earnest see the tremendous change in the body to smooth muscle, and that's uh, really, really good for your health, and it's very, very powerful stuff. Uh, internal power, root, uh, is much like the anchor or the brace behind a cannon that gives it the foundation to propel the cannonball with great force. If the cannon is not braced to the ground or weighs less than the cannonball, then the cannon will fly off as the projectile. Without root, one practitioner has little advantage over the opponent and Tuesho looks like wrestling. So if two people are relatively e e uh, equally matched and one doesn't have a mass advantage, even an in this internal mass advantage over the other one, it looks like wrestling. And so then you're going to have to have to, to practice uh, Fajian. You have to be very cooperative with each other. And of course, as Professor said, you should practice with all different types of people because everybody's different. Um, so if we had a cannon and we kicked up the legs and then we blasted off a shot, you know, if that cannon weighs less than the cannonball, you know, it's going to go out that window. That, that, that cannon has to be anchored to shoot that cannonball. So it's very much the same thing. And as people get better in Tai Chi and they have more of that relative advantage over others, uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. Next slide, please. Uh, I already talked about this, the wave of resistance is that subtle energy. Yes? Uh, for good Tifam, we want to have very light touch so as not to alert our opponent to our plan to attack the wave of resistance. We want to let, let the wave of resistance pass. The wave of resistance is they're throwing themselves at us to keep us from moving them. So we don't want to collide with that, we want to kind of get out of the way of that, let it go, and then once that's passed, it's like the other side of the wave. Then they, they kind of have lost their balance, they're at a reset, and you're taking advantage of that reset. Does that make sense? Uh, I'm sorry, let me go back to that slide. We want to let the wave pass, get in rhythm on the other side under the opponent, and then project the opponent away with whatever degree of power we choose. So we all have heard about using four ounces in Tai Chi. But Professor said that when you're actually pushing somebody out, uh, you use whatever force is necessary. So it's going to take much less force because you haven't met their resistance. You haven't met their attack. You've let that attack go, and then you step into the breach. You step over that wave, and then, oh, you know, that's when you, 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 you do it. And uh, if they're a big person, or if you're slightly off their center, you know, oh, it, might take, it might take more power. Okay, next slide. Methods for increasing internal power and push and sensitivity. So, uh, uh, my older brother Julian this, uh, earlier talked about, uh, you know, your, your, your Tai Chi practice. Basically, and I, I, you know, uh, it's all the same thing. If you want to be serious about getting health benefits from Tai Chi, 
whether you want to practice Tui Shou or not, uh, you know, whether you want to look at the martial arts aspects, it really doesn't matter. You have to do it the same way. And I think you have to, you know, chirp uh, and, uh, and push yourself. And, uh, you know, get those legs working um, and uh, meet yourself wherever you are and go a little bit beyond where you are uh, to challenge yourself and make sure that you're progressively challenge your, challenging yourself as you go along. And the health benefits that come from this uh, appear to be very clear. There, uh, from my reading, there's like two schools of thought in, in, uh, in uh, Tai Chi research. There's those that say it really doesn't have that much effect and there's that say it is clearly the best thing going, as the Harvard Medical School uh, book on Tai Chi says. And I made a guess uh, a long time ago that it was the seriousness of the practitioner. It was how much of, uh, of, uh, of serious Tai Chi work that was determining those two results. So um, holding postures, let's go back to that slide, please. Okay. Holding posture work, Ding sure. So this was very big uh, with Professor Jung and uh, Ben Lowe. So you're uh, separating weight, as Ben Lowe said. You're taking a step towards your posture and uh, holding that foot up about an inch off the ground and working with your balance there and uh, holding it maybe for a few breaths. And then you move into your, your posture. Um, next, uh, uh, Ding Shur or uh, standing work. Uh, picking a Benlo would say, you know, pick your favorite posture and hold it for a long time. Professor Zhang, in um, in his uh, black book, uh, I think Taiji Calisthenics, Taiji New Method, the one with the, for for with the black cover, he says in there, uh, you know, he talks about he shows the picture of himself, you know, doing uh, doing standing, and he says specifically, do not ignore. This, this method, do not ignore this practice. Uh, okay, so exercises to prompt the push-in partner to uh, employ force. Uh, this can be, okay. So when you, if you want to explore uh, Tifong uh, and that wave of resistance, you get with a person and you stand in your 70-30 stance. And professor would have people slide back all of their weight to 100% and then try and neutralize here. And then what you're trying to do is find that resistance or find their center. And don't just blast through it, but sort of get them to wiggle a little bit, okay? Kind of wiggle them like a, like a, a blade of grass. Find that, get in rhythm with that, and then, and then push through it. So, uh, and at uh, Shijong School, um, they had a long hall, a long wall, a brick wall with varnish on it, very shiny, very pretty. It was a beautiful place, like an art museum. I've never seen a, a martial arts school anywhere in the world that looked like that. And so that's where people practice push hands. And you, the people who had their back against the wall would practice neutralizing. And the people facing the wall, pushing them, would, fo would focus on the young or the, uh, the, the uh, pushing them out. Five minutes. Great. Thank you. So, uh, you know, w get with your, your person and, you know, if you find a wall and, and, and have them go back so they're intentionally not fighting you so that you can find that resistance and get in rhythm with, with, with their body because everybody's different and then pushing through it and practicing the method. Uh, I have a student here, Clement. Come on, Clement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Clement, Clement he's you know, your typical Tai Chi guy. He can beat the hell out of anybody on his own. <laughs> but he's just gonna be my push hands dummy. So, so, so he's standing here, and I'm just, you know, so when we push on somebody, just, uh, yeah. So, you know, we can see them wiggle and waggle, right? You can really see it here, because there's uh, two areas where we're really quite weak. It's across the shoulders, across the body here, right? But also from the front of the body. So, as I push on him, you know, it's, uh, it's it, look at him wiggle. So, that's what we're looking for. So he's wiggling, and I don't, and if he pushes at me, um, like I said, I don't want to just try and confront that. So if I'm pushing on Clement, 
and I push slowly and I resist. So he's resisting me. I don't want to, no, let's stand this one. I'm pushing on him and he's resisting me. I, I don't want to just try and blow through this, right? Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not efficient. So you want to let go and let him come back to rest. You see, that's the wave of resistance. Resist me again. Okay. So I'm pushing him. I'll tell you. Okay. Push him. okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm pushing him, right? Okay. He's resisting, and you know I let go. All right. So that's what it is. I don't want to just kind of like football and blow through him. Okay. So take a slightly larger stance. That's on that same line. So if we practice, you know, uh, Fajin this way, it's really hard. He's just going to instinctively turn his waist, turn your waist, and neutralize. It's a lot easier with beginners to come on this line because it's harder for them to, to, to get out of the way because it's just going to be tighter. So as I push, go, go away from me. Yeah, so now he's really running out of resources, right? And then he's going to get desperate, and he's going to say, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, a uh, 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 fight and try and stand here. And that's when I let go. And that's when I come back. Okay? So when you're practicing with your partner, you feel that where he's, oh yeah. Right? He's, he's coming back at me. So then I let that go. I don't jump on that. I don't try and, you know, pulverize him with that. I try and work with it. So, here, okay. All right, so go back. Go back. Right. So there it is. And, right? He resisted me, I let it go, and then I go again, and I just try and make him hop. Here, let's do it again. So I'm pushing. Yeah, he's resisting me all the way now. Now, don't resist me all the way now. Go back and then resist, okay? That's what Professor had people practice. Go back, sit back here, don't fight them up front, okay? Now, this is just for training. You don't go into a, an alley and fight this way. Right? This is Tai Chi training and for loosening your body, right? Each level is an accelerant for your Tai Chi, your tai chi practice. Okay, so go back. Good. All right, so there he is. There. Uh, now he's fighting me. Now I stop. Uh, right? And so it's timing and getting in rhythm with him. Remember, we're mostly water. So we're really kind of like a big garbage bag full of water. So if you filled up a garbage bag full of your weight in water and kind of thought about sloshing it around, that's the kind of rhythm that we're talking about. So you don't, if that garbage bag is coming at you full of water, you know, you don't want to meet it at the apex. You want it to go by, one minute, you want it to go by and then push on it. Just like a swing, just like catching a ball. All right, one more time. So now uh, Clement is going to resist me just like he was resisting me, okay? So I'm pushing him, right? No, 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 just start resist from the, from the, okay. from the outset, right? So I have to get down underneath, uh, uh, right? Feel his resistance. Don't fight it. Get in rhythm with it. And underneath and then push him out. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It takes a lot of sensitivity. You'll gain sensitivity about their subtle energy, right? Uh, when you're pushing, you'll gain energy about subtle energy. When you're the receiving, you're going to gain a lot of uh, uh, a benefit from trying to relax and uh, deal with that, that hardship. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so any quick questions? Or is there time? There shouldn't be any questions. Yeah, that was very we, thorough. We have a question. Yeah. Yeah. One question. Yes. 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 You are aware of the practitioner. Uh, 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 your opponent is a nice uh, trainer. So you can quickly, I mean, you can do this as you are know, uh, Yes. But if you have one uh, uh, opponent at the same level like you, yes. <laughs> how would you do it? Okay. <laughs> then you have to have the right opportunity. You have to have, you know, the, the, the right advantage. And if you're both wrestling and you're both at the same level, it's really going to be very, very difficult. You need to start, you know, with the training wheels, you know, with a friend, cooperative practice, where they're sitting back and making themselves vulnerable so that you can feel this kind of thing, right? We're kind of enlarging it. This is what we're looking for. And then, boom. 
So if they're if they're if they're your level of skill, 